Hey Robot Makers, hope you're having a good day so far. So, do you want to know which board to use in your next project? Which is the fastest, which is the cheapest, which is the lowest power, best connectivity, most powerful, and so on? Then this is the show for you. So let's dive straight in. My name's Kevin. Come with me as we build robots or bring them to life with code and have a whole load of fun along the way. Okay, let's get over to Keynote. Right. So yes, this is all about which board to use. So session goals, let's have a look at some common boards, shall we? Um, let's understand the different types of board, where you might use them, where you might not use them. Uh, let's also play microcontroller top trumps. <laughs> I've really gone to town on this. <laughs> uh, and we'll also talk about some other things to think about as well. And if uh, we have time, we'll also have a look at the Jetson Nano. Um, I've literally plugged in for the first time today. Um, so I've got it plugged into the camera. We can have a play with that and see what we see with it. Okay, so let's uh, get to the keynote. So I was thinking about different boards that we use, and I was thinking that there's probably a few different levels of board. So what I mean by that is some projects you can buy have no microcontroller at all. It's simply, like say, a light sensor, some capacitors, a resistor, a power source, maybe like a transistor, but there's no microcontroller in there. and what that means is, you know, it has no brain. It's really just working off like a reaction. It's just working off, um, you know, what the, what the circuit is driving it to do. So I say that's level zero. That's no microcontroller, just discrete components. So level one is where most people start with, say, like an Arduino. So it's an 8-bit microcontroller. It doesn't have Bluetooth or Wi-Fi. It could have, but probably doesn't to begin with. And... Um, Level one, it's probably going to run either MicroPython or C, something like that. Level two is a step up from that. So it's probably a 32-bit processor, um, possibly capable of running a full operating system, but maybe not, maybe just still. It's more than just the level one. It maybe has some cloud connectivity. Uh, and we'll get on to some examples of that uh, in a minute. And then level three is the sort of big daddy of them all. This is a 64-bit processor, can run full Python, has a specialist hardware for things like real-time AI, runs a full operating system. So you might see where I'm driving at with that. But just keep in mind, there's probably different levels of board. So when we're comparing them, let's make sure we're comparing them, you know, like with like, more or less. Okay, so <laughs> let's play a game of <laughs> microcontroller and small single board computer top trumps. Like I said, maybe I've gone a bit too far on this. <laughs> okay, so the Arduino is where most people start their journey with uh, ro robotics and microcontrollers. So I would say it's one of the original microcontroller boards. Um, it's the board that started them all. It's easy to find in shops uh, online um, and clones of. You don't have to buy the original one, though. If you do, it supports the um, Arduino Foundation. There is loads of software libraries, tutorials, guides, videos, books and courses on the Arduino. Um, and when I say Arduino Uno, I am talking about this little guy just here. So this is my my own very first Arduino Uno. Um, so there's probably been later versions of this. You can see it's got the is it USB A style port there. It's got the the chip. Oops, the chip just there. It's not got the little square one. It's got that one. It's not a Metro or anything like that. It's just the original Arduino. Um, so it is pricey compared to some others that are out there, some more modern boards. I found this online for about £23, and that was for an original branded Arduino. That was on Amazon, uh, just as a price comparison. So I've gone to Amazon for all these, not because of any reason for Amazon, just because it was easier to do so. So you may find them a little bit cheaper, but this is just like a standard. They're all about the same kind of comparison. And power-wise, um, it draws about 42 milliamps to a maximum of 200 milliamps. Um, and that's just how much it can power through the the, the I.O. pins. And it's quite limited as an 8-bit processor, so it can only access so much memory. Um, so it's got 32K on board. We can see in the little card there on screen. It's got 14 um, I.O. pins, and they're a mixture of um, analog and digital I.O. pins and pulse width modulation pins. It runs at a clock speed of about 16 megahertz. If you've ever built your own one of these, you can actually run them without... Um, without this little this little chip that's in the middle here, that's the crystal. I'll just show you that there. That little chip there, that's the crystal. And um, that's the thing that governs how fast this runs. If you take that out, it will run at about eight megahertz uh, or possibly four megahertz. Um, and that means it might use slightly less power. Um, but yeah, that's it's quite limited in just what it can do, how much memory it can access and so on. But because it's a starter one, it's probably one of the most common ones. And I would say it's definitely a level one. 
it is a microprocessor, um, microcontroller even. So the next up is the Arduino Mega. So I've got one of these here. So I'll just hold up the original Arduino next to it by way of comparison. I hold them like so you can see there. This one is considerably longer. It's got an extra bank of IOs all the way around there. So in fact, it's got 54 GPIO pins compared to the, the what was it, 14 on the, um, 14 on the, uh, the Arduino Uno. It has eight times more memory than the Uno. So it's really pushing. It's got 256K of RAM. So that's loads of memory to be able to, to store variables and manipulate all those different IOs. Um, Cost about only about a third more than the Arduino, so not too bad on price, but it's still quite pricey compared to what we can do with some other microcontrollers. Um, same speed as the Uno, so it's not like it's a faster chip, uh, and it draws about 73 milliamps, actually slightly low, less power than the original Uno. Uh, and you can reduce that further, a bit like I said before, by um, reducing the clock speed, running it slightly slower, or even by using the 3.3 volts instead of the 5 volt supply. That can make it uh, obviously a bit more... Um, power friendly. So this is used on quite a few projects like the uh, the InMove robot that's, that uses two of these to control all the different servos because you've got all those different I.O. pins you can have one for each servo. Um, why they didn't use uh, shift registers I don't know but that's that's what they chose for that project. Okay so the little sister of the Uno is the Arduino Nano. So I have one of these just here. So I've been using this one in my auto DIY, that's what's been powering that. So you can see there it's a lot smaller uh, when compared to the original Uno. And it's got this uh, nice, is it nice? Micro USB big version, it's not the micro one, it's the... I always think it's like the ugly version of the, the pins. And um, yeah, similar to the Uno, has 16 more I.O. pins, so it's got more I.O. pins than the original Uno. Same memory as the Uno, cheaper. Um, and smaller in, in form factor too, so it's easier to put in, in smaller robot projects. Same speed as the Uno, so no advantage there, but it does run at 3.3 volts as compared to the Arduino Uno that runs at 5 volts. So because of that, it only runs, it only draws 19 milliamps of power. So you can see there on the little um, um, top trunk card that we have, 8 bits, flash memory is 32K, just like the Arduino, 30 pins, 16 megahertz. It doesn't have Wi-Fi or Bluetooth. And it costs only about £16, so quite cheap. Um, okay, so let's move on to the Arduino Nano RP4020 RP Connect. That's a real mouthful. So this is the same form factor, actually, as the Arduino Uno. So uh, can you spot which is the RP2040 Connect if I hold them up there? It's, if I can get this right, it's that one. <laughs> Trying to figure out which one, which which hand I'm using because this is kind of reversed. But yeah, it's the same form factor, uh, but it does use the nicer USB connector rather than the sort of big ugly one, which uh, this one uses. You can see it's a much nicer one there. But it does have Wi-Fi and Bluetooth on board, so it wins there, and it's a lot cheaper as well than a lot of the boards that we've seen so far. The Arduino Nano RP2040 Connect uses the same chip as the Raspberry Pi Pico, so that's very popular at the moment. So it's 32-bit, dual-core, has 16 megs of, of uh, flash, so there's loads of space to be able to store things in, uh, in memory um, programs and so on. It's actually got 256k of memory, uh, but the, the flash storage for storing files is 16 meg, which is absolutely loads. I think the, the Pico only has four. So it has an extensive ecosystem with the Arduino Cloud. So this is why I would say this is actually a level two. Although it don't, doesn't run its own operating system on the board, it has this extensive ecosystem where you can do things and connect it to MQTT and all that kind of stuff. Uh, it has a load of sensors on board as well. So it has Wi-Fi, as an accelerometer, even as a microphone. It has a crypto chip, so you can store things like Wi-Fi passwords securely in there or run it through the algorithm to uh, produce you a nice hashed key, so that's safe and sound. It can run MicroPython or C. Uh, and like its um, its sister, the, the Arduino Nano, it only draws 19 milliamps, so it's quite low power. Um, so we can see there it's 32-bit, 256K of of RAM, so it's plenty of, um, for running programs. It's got 20 I/O pins, runs at 133 megahertz, so it's really blazing fast compared to the uh, to the Arduino. Uh, almost a different class, hence why it's level two. And it does have Wi-Fi and it does have Bluetooth. And about 18 pounds is what I found that for online. 
So I've not put that in a project yet. Uh, at the moment, we're in a weird situation where this chip is, this board is very capable, but MicroPython, the standard version of MicroPython, doesn't really allow you to use any of those things because um, they haven't written the libraries into it. Um, so it'll be interesting to see where that moves next. So if you want to get the best out of this board, probably best to use C++ for that. Okay, so the Arduino family, meet the Duinos. <laughs> so this is the ones that we've just looked at. Uh, so we've got the Arduino 2040 t Connect, we've got the Arduino Nano, the Arduino Mega, and the Arduino Uno, the original one. So which do we think is probably the best chip to use in your projects, depending on many different factors such as cost, power usage, I.O. pins, speed, and so on. So for me, it's got to be the Arduino Nano. Um, it's, well, it's the cheapest board of all of them. Um, and it gives you the best bang for buck. You don't get the 32-bit processor like on the Arduino Nano RP2040 Connect, but for the price, you get everything else you would need out of kind of a class um, level one type of board. Um, it's form factor as well, the weight, the power usage, all those things I think for me give it the, the winning score out of that, out of that level. Okay, so if, if you're enjoying these videos, uh, please make sure you give me a like uh, and a comment. If you've not already commented uh, to say hello or just what you think of this, whether you agree with my scoring or not, just leave me a comment below. And if you've not already subscribed to the channel as well, um, give that um, subscribe button. What do they say? Smash it. It's, it always makes me cringe when people say that. <laughs> or boop the subscribe button. Just click the button. <laughs> That's all you need to do. Um, so every, every Sunday we have a new video, um, a new live stream, um, which is what this is at seven o'clock GMT. We're cu currently GMT plus one because we're in summertime, but that'll change back um, not too far off actually. Is it next month that that happens? Anyways, so next up it's the expressive chip. So the ESP8266 or Node MCU, you might commonly see that as. So let me just find one there. Um, so yes, this is um, a Node MCU. You can see on the back there, it says Node MCU and on the front it looks like so. So it looks very similar to like the Arduino. It's actually a little bit fatter than the Arduino Nano. If I put that next to it, you can see there it's quite a bit bigger. Um, it has the same number of pins, but um, it's just a bit wider and a little bit taller. And um, this is very, very popular and it's one of the reasons is it's it's cheap. It has been around quite a while, but it's like an Arduino with Wi-Fi. That's how I, whenever I think I need a project that can do Wi-Fi, this is the first chip I think of. Not even the ESP32, just this one. So it's created by Expressive Systems um, from China. Uh, Node MCU stands for Node Microcontroller Unit, and Node MCU refers to the open source platform, the software platform. So even though it says that on the back, I usually wipe whatever's on there and put MicroPython on there because it's just I find a far better platform. That's just my own take of it. So it can run MicroPython or C. Great value for money. I find it for £6.50 online. You can buy them in bulk uh, and get that price right down. But just to buy a singular one, it's around that kind of price. If you buy them from something like AliExpress, it's probably a pound, something like that. It's really, really cheap. And power-wise, draws between 40 milliamp and 70 milliamp maximum. So quite low power. But the Wi-Fi chip always being on um, can mean that it's it's a constant draw. So you can actually turn the Wi-Fi off on the chip uh, if you need if you don't need it uh, or you don't need it all the time, um, and that will help just draw down, reduce some of the power usage that you've got there. So it's 32 bit as a chip, which is great. That that's why it can run MicroPython natively. It's got 32k of memory, so it's got plenty of space to run our programs. It's got 17 I/O pins. I mean, I counted those and. Um, I think some of them don't class as I.O. pins, so maybe it's actually more than that. Um, I'm sure it has 30 pins total, but um, I know some of the pins are like ground and voltage and so on. Um, what else? Uh, clock speed 80 megahertz, so um, not as fast as the RP2040 Connect, but it's uh, much faster than the Arduino. And uh, it has Wi-Fi, but not Bluetooth. So this version, the ESP8266, is just Wi-Fi. Uh, and if I think it's Wi-Fi G... Um, so it's not the latest, fastest, greatest version of Wi-Fi, but it's it's not the oldest version like A or B. It's quite quite in the middle there. Okay, so that's the ESP8266 or Node MCU. The ESP32, which has got to be the most popular board. Whenever I put anything out about Raspberry Pi Picos or how to add Wi-Fi to a Raspberry Pi Pico, people always say, why don't you just use an ESP32? 
and it's a really good question <laughs> because price wise for the for the cost of having the wi the wi-fi and bluetooth on there it's not bad value for money really so again exp uh, expressive systems create this it's the big sister of the es esp8266 it's dual core so just like the Raspberry Pi Pico, it's got two cores. We can actually use that in MicroPython, which we haven't done any of our projects yet. Uh, both have Wi-Fi, uh, sorry, it has both Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. So unlike the 8266, this has Bluetooth as well. I've never used that yet uh, on any of my projects. It's a very capable board, can run MicroPython. And again, it's a bit heavier on usage power-wise, 90 milliamps to a maximum of 500 milliamps. So it's used, it can use quite a lot more power. And some of that is because of the Bluetooth and the Wi-Fi. So that's kind of setting the bar that a bit higher. Of, of it needs more power. Wi-Fi is like really um, draining of power. So if you've got a project you know, running on a battery, you need to consider, do you really need that to be on all the time and just switch it off on the chip? So... Um, still classing this as a level one board interestingly because um it still hasn't doesn't run a, an operating system it's just running MicroPython or a c program uh, but it's definitely the most popular board that i've come across so the esp01 this thing is absolutely tiny i'm just going to show you the uh, esp32 first i forgot to show you that so esp32 as compared to the node mcu they almost look identical the ESP32 is slightly larger. You can see it's this one here. Uh, it doesn't have that sort of wiggly, sorry, the little wiggly line as the antenna. It's sort of hidden away under that board. Um, and it has a Bluetooth chip on it as well. So it's, um, it's quite a bit bigger uh, in footprint and sort of height as well, I think. Okay, so, the e so as compared to that, let's just bring that chip back. The ESP01 is absolutely tiny. So this is essentially just the Wi-Fi chip that's encased in that metal thing there. That's what this is on its own. It has a weird arrangement of pins on it as well. So there's like, I can show you that there. Um, it's got this like eight pins and a little header connection. Now, these chips are great for plugging into a breadboard because the pins are so separated. You can put it down the middle of a breadboard and it'll, it'll sort of straddle either side. This thing, however, that's not going to be the case. You probably need something like, um, I've got one here, one of these FTDI um, boards. Let me just go to the full screen for a second. So this FTDI board um, is a way that you can connect using USB. That's a little USB chip there. And you can connect these pins as serial to something like this. So you can just, I've got the wrong pins on here, but you know, it'll be more like that style that you just plug in. And you need to know what the pinouts are. So you can actually flash MicroPython onto these things. Again, I'll just show you next to uh, next to this thing just how small that is. So it is literally just the chip that's in there. Um, so yes, this can actually run MicroPython, this tiny little thing. I'll get that running and I'll show you that one day because um, it's unbelievable that something so small can do some so much stuff. So it's the little sister of the ESP8266. That's what that little chip on there is. It's an 8266. Simple Wi-Fi, doesn't have Bluetooth, it's a very capable board, can run MicroPython, it's very, very affordable. I found this for about £3, and again, it's one of them you buy in bulk, so you can get 10 of these for um, probably £10 rather than, because you get that sort of uh, economy of scale if you buy in bulk. Very fiddly to upload though. So yeah, you do need one of those um, FTDI boards to be able to sort of upload something to it. So very fiddly, not very breadboard friendly. Um, but draws a ridiculously small amount of power. So this is the one to use as a module, probably if you want to add Wi-Fi to any of your projects. It draws 15 microamps uh, to a maximum of 400 milliamps. So it's got a real range of usage there. Um, but the number of IO pins is just eight. I mean, in reality, it's just two on the board. So you've got GPIO zero and GPIO one. Um, and that's it. That's all you can really do with it. And you've got like a receive and a transmit as well. So it's 32 bit. That's what the mind blowing thing about this tiny little chip is. Compare that to an Arduino. I'll just show you compared to an Arduino. This thing is absolutely minute. You can barely see it in comparison next to it. It's just tiny. So 32 bit. It has 32 K of RAM. So loads and loads of RAM to store things on. It has uh, eight IO pins which we just mentioned, runs at 80 megahertz. So it's actually not too bad speed wise as well. And it has Wi-Fi, just Wi-Fi, not Bluetooth and costs around three pounds. So 
pretty good board i always think have a, have a couple of them they cost next to nothing to buy and it just means you can add wi-fi to any of your projects pretty simply so let's have a look at the expressive family here they are the esp01 we've just looked at the esp8266 which is very common and then the esp32 so which one of these do we think is going to win the top trumps um, on this particular round for the expressive it's got to be the 32 hasn't it um, it's got the both bluetooth and uh, wi-fi it's got absolutely loads of memory, 320k of RAM, which is just ridiculous. It's got all those IOs and speed wise, it can run at 240 megahertz. It's just blastingly fast. So that's got to be the, the winner for me. OK, and I'll come to the comments in a minute as well. So Raspberry Pi Pico. So this is the uh, the latest and cheapest Raspberry Pi board created by the Raspberry Pi organization. It's very affordable, at around four pounds. Um, that depends on where in the world you live. So I live in the UK where this has been um, produced. I was going to say manufactured. I think they do manufacture it in Wales in the UK, um, but I might be mistaken. I think they might source some of the silicon from elsewhere, but um, it's manufactured, produced in the UK. Uh, and I'm based there, so that's why it's quite cheap. If you want to buy that overseas, it can be a bit more expensive. But it's very affordable, very low power. So when we're having a, a battle between the, uh, the ESP32 and the Pico, let me just grab those two. So this is what the Pico looks like. It's like a long skinny board compared to the uh, ESP32 there. Um, so you can see there, similar kind of footprint, similar kind of uh, USB connector on the end. Is that the micro USB connector? So that's the Pico just there. So yes, very low power, and that's because it doesn't have Bluetooth or Wi-Fi. It's got no external connectivity to the real world other than through the serial. Um, but that's why it's so low power, um, which I've not put on here, actually, because I couldn't find any good metrics for that. Uh, it runs MicroPython or C++. It's one of the boards that's really pushed MicroPython into the common sphere. Um, a lot. I, I was using MicroPython a couple of years ago uh, when it was really rare for people to use that. Um, but because of the popularity of this board, it's really opened out, um, as well as some other boards, I, I will get to later, but that's one of the things that's really pushed MicroPython sort of into the, um, into the, the common arena. So it's very well supported. Um, the doc there's loads of documentation and guides, and that's one of the things that the Raspberry Pi organization um, have really championed. They exist to sort of um, bring uh, programming and electronics and, you know, that kind of bedroom programmer that happened in the 1980s i think um eben upton who's the 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 founder of raspberry pi you know he was one of those people with a bbc computer which i have in the background just here that's a bbc computer just there um he had one of these and uh, that was a, a british company that produced that uh, the bbc micro acorn who actually founded the arm organization they were a part of the original um people who designed which is in almost every mobile phone chip and most of these chips here are based on the arm chip as well so pico kind of has a you know some history some ancestry to the bbc computer um and that's why there's so much documentation about that that's the, the very long tangent i was going off there so bits wise it's 32 bit has 264k of uh, memory to run programs store variables and so on which is absolutely loads i think that's four megs of uh, flash for storage as well it's got 26 io pins so it's got quite a few and it runs at 133 megahertz so it's pretty fast as well it doesn't have wi-fi or bluetooth but it's only about four pounds so it's very very low power uh, and you've got all the extra processing power as well dual core too um, can run c and it can also um, run MicroPython. and one of the cool things that this can do that i don't think you can do on esp 32s unless somebody proves me wrong is it's got programmable io so you can actually write drivers at a hardware level in machine code um, and this thing will will basically hand that off to a separate processor a sub processor to to run that code in the background so pretty clever stuff so i'm a big fan of the raspberry pi pico i have an absolute shed load of these uh, i seem to use one in almost every project so the raspberry pi zero so this is actually a level two device this does run a a, a full operating system on board so it's created again by the raspberry pi organization it's not actually a microcontroller it's a full 32-bit 
computer. So it's a microcomputer. Runs a flavor of Debian Linux. You can actually run any operating system on there um, that runs on an ARM chip. So you could run a RISC OS. You can run like a MEGA OS. There's all kinds of quirky groups of people out there who run various different operating systems other than the Raspberry Pi OS, which is just like a, a flavor of um, Debian Linux. Has loads of I.O. pins on it. It's got the, uh, the 40 pins that's pretty standard across all the Raspberry Pi devices. Uh, loads of storage as well because it has the SD card and you can store, you know, up to what about a terabyte on there you've got absolutely loads of space um, it has 512 meg of onboard memory on ram so running programs is is no bother at all for it and it actually has a full desktop um, user interface so it runs a gui runs um, a web uh, sorry a, a desktop or a, a desktop interface with a keyboard and mouse that you can use that you can even remote into it using vnc and it runs full Python, which is why I use it in a lot of my projects. So rather than the MicroPython with the sort of limited access to libraries, this runs the full Python. So you can do like data science on it. You can do all kinds of fancy stuff. And again, because it's from the Raspberry Pi organization, loads of documentation and guides. And they're very cheap. So if you want to get the Raspberry Pi Zero that doesn't have Wi-Fi on board. So this little silver chip just here is the Wi-Fi. I don't know if I've got one to hand, actually, that um, doesn't have Wi-Fi. I better have. There we go. Again, I've got so many of these. So this original one that doesn't have Wi-Fi, um, you can see there, it doesn't have a little silver chip just about there. This one does. This one's got the little shiny chip. This one is the original one. It doesn't have Wi-Fi and um, costs £4. So it costs the same as the Pico. £4 for a computer, that's just ridiculous. Um, they, they, they don't come with header pins, so you have to solder them on yourself, or you can buy them with pre-soldered header pins. Let me just get that to focus there. So this is one of the ones that's got the pre-soldered header pins on there. So that's um, the Wi-Fi and the header pins. It's called the Raspberry Pi Zero WH for uh, wireless and header pins. So that costs about £14 to get that done. Seems to be a lot just for what it is, but hey. Um, what else can we say about this? So yes, 40 pins, runs at one gigahertz speed, so blindingly fast as compared to some of these smaller, less powerful micro control boards. Uh, and it does have Bluetooth and Wi-Fi as well. So very easy to connect to other devices and to kind of be the brain of other devices as well. So I've used this in a few projects. I'm looking at my quad smas I have on my wall over here. I don't know if we can see that on, uh, I just jumped to this camera here. Um, there's a quad robot just here that um, is running um, with a Raspberry Pi Zero. So it's one of my favourite boards. This this is going to get a high score for me, I can tell you now. <laughs> and then the newest computer from the Raspberry Pi organisation is the Raspberry Pi 4, 4B. So this is the, the new one. We can tell it's the 4 because it's got these absolutely minute, almost pointless HDMI connectors and it has USB-C for the power as well. has an audio jack, which is really cool. has four um, USB ports. And the USB port, you can see it's got two USB 2 and it's also got um, USB 2 there as well. And it's got um, an Ethernet port, I think that's a gigabit. So a pretty powerful board. Comes in a few different flavours. You can have uh, two, four or eight um, megs of memory. I'm just looking at that board there, it's just slightly come away. Uh, runs on a SD card as well, you just pop in the back there. It can get quite hot when you're running these, so I'd recommend you put it in a case that can... Uh, hold a fan of some kind. So again, this is created by the Raspberry Pi organization, not a microcontroller. It's a 64-bit version of the uh, Raspberry Pi. So the, the Raspberry Pi Zero was 32. All the previous boards were 32-bit. This is a 64-bit board. So this can run and have some serious power behind it. Again, it runs a flavor of um, Debian Linux called Raspberry Pi OS. And currently the Raspberry Pi OS is only 32-bit. So if you want to run the full 64-bit and get the uh, extra memory usage out of that. So if you've got an eight gig version, if you run the 32 bit version, you can only access up to four gig of RAM because that's the limitation of 32 bits. It's to do with how many numbers you can store in a 32 bit number. Um, so you have to run the beta version of the Raspberry Pi OS. So I'm pretty sure they're gonna launch that this year, pretty soon. So like I said, it's got four full size USB ports, two of which are USB three. Uh, runs a full desktop user interface and it's desktop class. I mean, it's pretty quick. You can run Chrome, no problem. If you run Chrome on the, the Zero, it can be a little bit laggy. 
and I'll just show you comparison wise to the the zero so there's zero on the top and here's the Raspberry Pi 4 underneath so it's quite a bit bigger as a board and you've got to factor that in as well does run does take a lot more power to run because of the much faster processor and all that RAM that it's got to keep active uh, but it does run a full version of Python which is what we want it's quite expensive so they're about 73 pounds for the full 8 gig version you can get the 4 gig version for around 50 pounds I think it is um, so 64 bit 40 pins IO 1.5 gigahertz clock speed so it's that bit quicker than the uh, the 1 gigahertz from the Raspberry Pi Zero and it has obviously Bluetooth and Wi-Fi as well so you can do some pretty cool things from an AI perspective on this board and that's what I've been doing with this I've been training my AI robots and doing some object detection and all that kind of stuff on there and it can just about handle uh, a couple of frames a second doing that but not much more than that so a pretty powerful board so this is the Raspberry Pi family how do we think this is going to stack up? Who do we think is going to win this? So a bit of a bit of a mixed bag here because we've got the level two and a level one um, devices competing side by side. So because of that, I would say the Raspberry Pi wins when it comes for speed and capability, but the Raspberry Pi Pico wins when it comes to low cost uh, and low power. So depending on what your needs are, um, this may be the best board for you. Okay, so Adafruit, they have produced quite a few number of boards and I've only picked um, just the Circuit Playground. They have so many boards, it'd be quite difficult to review all of them. But this is one of the common ones that I come across, which is the Circuit Playground. So the Circuit Playground is, um, this one is the Blue Fruit, so it has Bluetooth enabled. And you can see that it's got all these crocodile clip um, friendly um, pin things on the outside and it also has some Neo pixels it's got eight neo pixels all the way around sorry it's got 10 neo pixels I thought it had eight it's actually 10 so I've got that wrong um, and it also has um, it's got some clickable buttons there button a button b it has a microphone it has a speaker um, it has an accelerometer it has a temperature sensor on there um, it has a microphone which I mentioned and a light sensor as well so it's got a whole bunch of sensors on there you can just about see if I hold that there you can see that it, it calls out some of the sensors on there, like this little music symbol there, there's a little eyeball there, there's a little um, ear there, and there's also the accelerometer thing. I think it's just up there, and there's a temperature sensor too. So it's got loads of sensors, and that's what these kinds of boards are good for. If you want to do experiments and try stuff out without having to connect and wire and worry about have you got the right component, you can just buy one of these and it's got everything that you need on there. Um, I was thinking about using these Neo Pixels on a, on a robot because they're quite nice. They spin round. You can make them all different colours because they're RGB. So you can make chase patterns. You can individually address them and so on. So it runs mic it runs um, MicroPython, which is great for me, or CircuitPython. Created by Adafruit in uh, New York. Has tons of sensors on board, similar to the Microbit as well. So I have a Microbit, and we're going to look at that one in a second. The Microbit is there by comparison. Microbit is this one here. This is the Circuit Playground. And I'll show you as well just how that stacks up size-wise compared to say like a an Arduino or a Raspberry Pi Pico. So similar kind of size. Doesn't have any header pins on it because you just crocodile clip things to the outside. That's the idea with this. Has a USB, micro USB connector on the top there. Um, but it also has this great big connector on here which is for plugging a battery pack. So this is designed to have a battery pack plugged into it. Uh, I did have one to hand, but I don't know where it's gone. Um, but yes, yeah, very easy to plug in power to this and just have this run uh, off uh, two AA batteries, I think it is. Three AA, three AAA batteries, in fact, it says at the bottom there. So yes, has a speaker and a microphone, so you can actually have like voice outputs on this thing, which is pretty cool. Has the accelerometer, so you can figure out which orientation it is. Um, yeah, Adam's saying about the, hate the shape of the playground and the flora. Yeah, the round shape, it's it doesn't lend itself to going in kind of a rectangular shaped robot. Um, so uh, I, you would have to have a special case where that's actually useful to you. And I'm not sure how you would plug that into anything. I have got a cricket board that is supposed to receive one of these. Um, but yeah, they're, they're more designed to have crocodile clips connected to them rather than anything else. So it's quite a temporary thing. One of the reasons I don't like these boards is because there are too many sensors on board 
to be useful and they're quite expensive compared to other chips that you can get that just have what you need. So like a Pico is great because it doesn't have anything you don't need on it. So that's one of the reasons I like the Pico so much. Now this does have Bluetooth on board, which is pretty cool. Um, and what else? It's 32 bits, so it can run MicroPython. It has 256K of RAM, so it's got plenty to run our programs in. Eight IO pins, it's not great. Um, 64 megahertz, so it's not that quick, it's not that slow. It's faster than an, uh, an Arduino, but not as quick as a Pico or an ESP32. And it only has the Bluetooth, but it's about 18 pounds. So kind of, um, almost saying it reminds him of the um, Arduino equivalent. Um, yeah, so it's it's kind of like a lily pad. Um, it's designed to, just to be a development board to play around with and experiment. So I guess these are designed for like education use really, rather than... Um, robot you know robot makers like us that want to put this in a board and then you know put it on in a robot and then have done with it this is designed to be sort of reused again and again so i've called it a development board there then we have the bbc micro bit so i've got uh, i've got a couple of these this is the newer version we can tell it's the newer version because it's got this great big chip here and here um that's the the microphone and speaker sorry the microphone is the tiny little gold chip next to it and then there's a speaker next to it there and again, this has got a whole bunch. I'll just go on full screen so we can see this bit better. It's got a whole bunch of um, things on it. So it has a radio just here. It has a USB, Bluetooth antenna, microphone. It's got the reset button. This also has that white thing that's just here is for a battery. So you can connect a nice JST connector for batteries. Uh, we can see it's got a speaker. It's got a processor, accelerometer, compass, and all these pins. So, and then on the other side, we have two buttons like a, left and a right and we've got this led matrix and un unless you've programmed and played with this you wouldn't know that that gold uh, logo there is actually a capacitive touch sensor so if you touch that um, that's also a sensor as well and you can see on the bottom there it's got these sort of segments so there's five crocodile clippable connector things so there's one for ground and one for three volts and then you've got one two three uh, to connect other projects to but if you look there is also these really small ones in between which means we can pl plug this into um, a board to receive it and we can access all those extra um, I.O. pins. So it's actually got 17 I.O. pins that we can connect to. It's 32 bits, so it runs MicroPython or a flavor of Python, which isn't fully MicroPython and isn't fully Python either. <laughs> so if you go to um, microbit.org, they have their own flavor of that. It's like its own dialect of Python, which is a bit... Mm, just use a standard version, people. Come on, stop forking off MicroPython into different flavors. Just keep keep one version. Otherwise, there's going to be loads of versions out there. So I get, uh, similar to the uh, the Blue Fruit, this has got loads of sensors on board. The version 2 has the speaker and the microphone. The version 1 doesn't. Um, this one has Bluetooth and radio. I think the original one didn't have Bluetooth, but it did have radio. And the radio allows you to connect between two micro bits using... Um, is it like 400 megahertz? It's like a, a local, you can, it's more than Bluetooth. It's not as powerful as Wi-Fi, but it does mean you can send messages between devices, which is quite fun. Has an accelerator, accelerometer on board. It's got those five by five matrix, so you can display messages across it. Uh, and it's quite low power as well. 200 mil, sorry, two milliamps to nine milliamps maximum. So it doesn't really use very much power. Um, but yeah, just Bluetooth, 64 megahertz speed, and it has 512K of memory. So it's got quite a bit compared to some of the other chips we've looked at. It's quite pricey for what it is. The original ones were much cheaper than that, around about £10. These ones are a bit more expensive. I, I found it for 38 online. Um, and they were all, I think everybody in year seven, which is um, like first year in in old money uh, of, of high school every single child in the uk got one of these one year um so I'm, I'm i bet these are in drawers everywhere so you should probably be able to find them um, on ebay quite cheap as well so i quite like these actually um the the digital compass is useful for positioning as with, with the accelerometer as well so i've actually got another smiles quad robot that has a connector that you can drop this in and you can use the leds as well for like a face or something like that so they're quite fun i i like these uh, and Omar's there saying they're quite awkward to program in. Started with his nieces on them, and uh, they got um, they got um, ride quickly for the Pico. I'm not sure what you mean by that. They got ride quickly for the Pico. So yeah, they're they're nuanced. I mean the the whole 
this is a BBC um, device as well. So like the original BBC master computer, if I go back to that, you can see there that it says BBC micro micro bit. So sponsored by the BBC, British Broadcasting Corporation, um, as being like a computer, you know, a microprocessor for the masses. Let's uh, drop it to the floor there. Uh, what else can we say about that? Um, I quite like them. I, I didn't like them at first. I thought there was too many sensors on it for what it was and, you know, not very practical because the the uh, the crocodile clippable I.O. pins. But the fact that you can plug it into something that can access all of them, for me, that means that it's um, it's more accessible. All right, almost as uh, get rid of. So I understand. So, yeah, got rid of that instead of a Pico. And I would agree with that. I think they're OK as a starter thing. They're trying to be everything to everyone. And because of that, it kind of it kind of makes it a bit more confusing to, to know what this is for. Um, so, yeah, that for me, it's 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 good, but it's a little bit novelty, a bit like the uh, the blue fruit. So we have the Jetson Nano as well. So I've got one of these on my desk here. Let's see if I can get the camera to show you this. This thing is huge. It's got this great big heat sink. You can see there compared to the the Uno, it's it's a beast compared to the Raspberry Pi as well. It's a beast. It's huge. It's very similar to the Raspberry Pi in that it's it's a full desktop computer as well. So it's created by Nvidia, who do the graphics cards. Uh, so this is why this it has come about from them. It's, it's really aimed at artificial intelligence and machine learning on the device. So this is its wheelhouse. This is its niche. So it's not a microcontroller. This is a full 64-bit computer. Runs a, um, Debian Linux, a flavor of that. Um, it's got two USB ports on there. An Ethernet, I think it's one gigabit Ethernet on there. Runs a full desktop interface, keyboard and mouse. Runs um, Python. Has two gig of RAM on board, so that's plenty of RAM to be um, running our programs in. It is expensive what it is, um, but the dedicated hardware for real-time AI processing hasn't really got a peer. It's peerless. It's it's just in a class of its own. Uh, what I find interesting as well is the camera connector is the exact same camera connector that the Raspberry Pi has. So we go back over to our overhead, for example. On the Raspberry Pi, we have this connector here, which is for the camera. And I've actually plugged in a camera from um, the Raspberry Pi as well. Put a little piece of blue tack on it there. And um, Yes, that's quite a useful thing because it means we can reuse some of the common components that we have. And um, what I did with this Jetson Nano is um, I want to make a smart robot that uses the Jetson Nano. Let me just move these out of the way. So um, you might have seen this as the show was just starting. So this is a regular um, Smars robot. You can see there it's got the, uh, the sensors at the front for distance and it's got the, uh, the Arduino Uno that sits in there. I made a smaller version of this as well, which is the Smars Mini. And um, I thought it was time to make the <laughs> Smars XXL, which is a huge version of the Smars robot. And this perfectly fits our Jetson Nano because it's been designed to fit it. So that will fit in there like so. And the idea being that the, the camera can fit into just between the eyes there. You can see that we've got a little square hole there for the for the camera. So that's what I intend to do with that. Okay, let's get back over to our keynote. So from them developer boards, between the uh, the Adafruit Bluetooth uh, Blue Fruit and the BBC Microbit version two, which one do we think will win? And this was tricky, but I think for me it is the Microbit. It's my preferred board. It's more expensive than the Blue Fruit. Um, but it has more memory, runs at the same speed, has Bluetooth the same. So for me, it's just because of that connectivity, the fact it's rectangular, you can put it in there. So which one do we think will win, win round one? So between the Arduino Nano, the ESP32, the Microbit version 2 and the Raspberry Pi Pico, which one do we think will win? So I'll give you a second to think about that, maybe to vote on that. Now, given we've we've uh, looked at these side by side, um, we looked at pricing, we've looked at power, we looked at memory, and so on. So for me, it's got to be the ESP32, and at a very close second place, the Raspberry Pi Pico. So 
for me, it's one of those two boards that we're going to be using in our project. So the Arduino Nano is 8-bit. It's kind of old school. It's a bit too old school for me. Um, the ESP32 wins in so many different places. The Raspberry Pi Pico is popular, maybe a bit faddy, but it's very popular. It's certainly popularised um, MicroPython amongst the masses. But as compared to the ESP32, it's not got as much RAM. It doesn't have as fast a processor. Uh, they're both du dual core, um, but the ESP32 has Bluetooth and Wi-Fi, and that for, is, is the deal breaker. And it's not that much more expensive than the, the Pico. I mean, yeah, it's nearly twice as expensive, but it's objectively speaking, it's under $10. It's under £10. It's, it's quite cheap. OK, round two boards between the Arduino... Um, Nano RP2040 Connect and the Raspberry Pi Zero. Which one do we think will win between those two? For me, it's the Zero. Maybe it's a little bit of an unfair challenge that because the uh, Arduino Nano isn't f a true level two board, but it, it has that ecosystem that's part of the, the thing that you can use with it. But for me, the, the flexibility of the, the Zero and the fact that it has Wi-Fi, the fact it's got all that memory on it, the fact that it's a full Unix computer and it runs full Python, that's for me is the, the deal breaker. Now for round three, who do we think will win this one? It's a tricky one, you know, because it's got so many, <laughs> it's got so many uh, competitors. It's got to be the Jetson Nano, hasn't it? So for me, that's the, the winner out of all. So if you want to play Top Trumps as well, you can print out these cards. Um, I had so much fun <laughs> designing these, like, too much um finding all the specs and putting it on there and i was thinking like what else could we put on there maybe like the power that's the only one that i didn't add on there as a specs but you can download them if you want as well it's only four pounds if you're already a member of the buy me a coffee um membership then you get that for free as well because uh because why not so if uh, you want to help support the show, you can either buy them, or you can go to buymeacoffee.com slash Kevin McAlee and that can help pay for the website hosting, the royalty free music, the graphics software, streaming equipment and so on. And in fact, one of the things I would like to purchase next if I get enough money through the memberships and I don't get very much at the moment, hint, hint, uh, is a new overhead camera. This overhead camera is just a USB camera. It's not great. Um, it doesn't focus very well if you hold something close. Um, it doesn't sort of zoom in. And what I want to do is get the same camera that I've got here that really does sort of zoom in sharply, like so. So that's what I want to replace. Um, but we're talking about a £1,000 for that. It's not very cheap. So if you want to help the show, um, then you can you can either buy these Top Trump cards and that can help go towards it. So um, just head over to buy me a coffee slash Kevin McLean. and you can see there it's in this sort of downloadable products area. Uh, and if you're already a member of the uh, buy me a coffee membership, then you get that for free. So you can download those, print them out, cut them out and play with them. So I have a few of them just here. So they're quite cool. You can play top trumps with your kids <laughs> and teach them something about microcontrollers as well while you play. Cool. Um, so, so recommendations based on skill. Do you agree that, that those three are the, are the winners? So level one, we've got the ESP32. Level two, we have the Raspberry Pi Zero. And level three, we have the Jetson Nano 2 gig. 2 gig is the new version. It's slightly, is it slightly more expensive? I think it's supposed to be a better mixture. It has a um, two camera connectors on it, as I understand. There's a few other things about this that they've speed bumped various things, but I just bought the newest one that was available, to be honest. So do you agree with those recommendations? The ESP32, I get so many people talking about that. I, and to be honest, the only thing that I've used something like that in is the, uh, the uh, WeatherBot. So... Let's uh, get over to some of the things. Uh, however, 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 the best board is the one that you already have. So if you already have an ESP32, great. <laughs> if you already have a Pico, great. If you already have a Microbit, a Blue, Blue Fruit, an Arduino, whatever you've got, that's the best board for you because that's what you already have with you. Um, and... I was thinking about this. A lot of people will show me like, how do you get started in robotics? How do you build this? And they'll show me like a pencil drawing of a robot that they've drawn. Um, I've probably got something similar in one of my books. I've, I have my orange book of awesomeness. Uh, and in here I will draw ideas that I have for various robots. I want to show you one. I can quickly find it. Um, yeah. So for example, there's a bit of a sketch that I've got there. And that's all that, that is at that point in time. Let me just go full screen so we can see that. Um, the white in here is not good. There we go. So you can see there, I've sketched out what I wanted to draw, which is... 
which is this thing. So from that little sketch, I managed to draw and 3D print and design something. And it was just from that one pencil design that I came up with that. So for me, dream big. Think about what your, even if you haven't got the skills yet, what is the ideal thing? So for me, I want a, I want a full human sized robot that's fully articulated. So I have started printing that out using the uh, InMove robot. Uh, and I got stuck on the programming of that. I didn't like um, my robot lab. Don't hate me. I didn't really like that as an interface. I wanted to be able to do something in, you know, more Python type scripts, but I didn't have the Python skills at the time. This was probably about five years ago. But dream big. You need to think about what your goal is and then head towards that goal. So don't be afraid to dream big, even if your skills are not there yet. And then take small steps. You know, if you think about how I do my projects, I'll focus on something really small to begin with. And it might be like, how do we add wi-fi to a, an arduino device or how do we make a robot an arduino robot move forward or move forward and then turn left or detect range, range sense with a sensor and each show that i'll do will be focused on one element of moving me personally towards the goal of having this big robot so each of these skills is kind of built upon the skills previously that you've learned and you'll also learn you know skills like how to code and then make the thing as well so don't just design things or watch endless youtube videos you know, get your your tools out, physically make something, connect things together, make some magic smoke, <laughs> burn things, try different things out. Um, if you make things that, you know, everything else will come from that. And I, I've, I've learned so much since I've started making things. And then don't give up. So failure is part of learning. You will make mistakes along your way, whether it's code mistakes, you'll get frustrated because something doesn't work. And that's where things like the um, small robots community on Facebook can help you out. So if you get stuck, post a message on there, say, this is what I'm trying to do. Here's a link to the code or just copy and paste the code in there. And you'll be surprised how quickly people will help you get where you need to be with that. So don't give up, reach out and uh, Everyone can help you with that. Not just me. Don't directly message me and say, how do I do this, Kevin? You would not believe how many messages I get a day from people saying, hi, can you help me with this? So I can't even accept friend requests, I'm afraid, now on that one. So I think that's nearly it, is it? Demo time. Right. So we've got a few minutes left. What I was thinking we could do is plug in. Let me just plug in the Jetson Nano. I've never actually played with this, so I don't know how this demo is going to go, but I thought it'd be good fun to do this together. So let me just plug that in there. Okay, and let me go over to is that one there. There we go. So I've never booted up the Jetson Nano before. This is a first for me as well. I thought I'll do this live because then we can do it together and it'll be fun. And I will read the comments. Let me just plug that in there. So I was trying to plug in the USB keyboard and mouse. Cool. I'll just show you what was going on there. This is the really unflattering camera. I'm going to turn that one off. <laughs> the sort of up the nose shot. I don't think that helps anyone, does it? There we go. <laughs> so I've got it inside my me Mega Smars, Smars XXL. Uh, I've got a camera plugged in there as well. You can see on the overhead and uh, we can see the screen there. So let's go back to the screen view, which is there. OK, so it's saying, please accept the terms and um, accept the license. So, yep, I accept the license. I've no idea why we need to do that. Uh, let's go for that. I don't know how long this is going to take to do. Let's just say, yes, this is looks like Ubuntu to me. I don't know which flavor of Linux. I thought it was Debian. I guess that the interface might just be um, no more something like that whatever uh, i'm in the uk i'll have a uk keyboard please oops there we go that'll do and what else is it going to ask me to do it's probably going to ask for some kind of wi-fi thing in a minute where am i I'm not in london look the uk is bigger than just london come on all right let me just get this keyboard on my knee so i can type a few things in as we go destroying my collection there so it's ubuntu it is ubuntu thank you for that i wasn't sure whether it was a uh, debian or not so my name is kevin we'll call it jetson um, pick a username kev password guess what my password is uh, that'll do for now uh, what's it saying there please enter the desired size of the app partition 
whatever. I'm just going to go with whatever it suggests there. That's fine. This is the memory card that it's formatting, I guess. Um, what else is there? Uh, create swap file. Yep, whatever. And then delete unused bootloader partitions. Yep. So I've, I've, what I've done, I went onto the NVIDIA website, went into the Jetson area, and then I downloaded the uh, boot image. And I actually used the Raspberry Pi OS um, flash thing, the um, SD card writer software, just to do a custom one. So I've no idea how long this is going to take to do this. It might take a while. So while it does that, let me just go back to some comments and see what people are seeing there. So let me scroll right to the top there. So so Adam was saying, how many cores? So which one were you asking how many cores? The um, <laughs> There's so many chips we've gone through. I think it's only the Pico and the 32 and the RP2040 Connect that have two cores. The... Raspberry Pi Zero has a single core. The Raspberry Pi um, 4, I think that's quad core. Um, I'm not sure about the Nano. That's got a whole bunch of cores as, as far as I understand. So Keith also says he has a Jetson Nano 4 gig. Awesome. So I'm not sure what the difference is other than the 2 gig, if there's any other differences as well. No was very impressed with the ESP32 choice. <laughs> Good. I'm not going to get shot. <laughs> Um, add operating voltage. Yes, I definitely need to add that as well. It's quite difficult to find the operating voltage because it depends on what you plug into it. I mean, you could just say without doing anything, without plugging any I/O pins in, this is how it runs. Does it run hot? Does it run? Yeah. You know, what what drawer is it? Uh, and I was I actually haven't got any equipment to figure out what the drawer would be. Um, possibly. I've, I do have those um, Elgato plug sockets i've got them for things like my lights so i can turn off my uh, lights with my phone using a uh, home kit and they do tell you what the power drawer is so potentially i could do that but i'm not sure how accurate that would be so hypotix says the adafruit clue is awesome board and it's compatible with the bbc micro bit so this is what adafruit are really cool at doing they will take something that's very popular like the arduino and then they'll make a more awesome version using the same form factor so they have like the metro which is like a 32-bit version of the arduino um, but in the exact same form factor so that's pretty cool and then omar was asking what's your background kevin um what what got you into robotics and teaching and streaming that's a good question. So I've always been into robotics since I was like a little kid. I've always liked robots. Hence the uh, the film movie posters there, like the um, Forbidden Planet. It's one of my favourite films there. Uh, I've got some other films there. You probably can't see that one because it looks a bit obscure. But we've got um, that one there is uh, Westworld. We've got Metropolis. We've got um, 2001. We have um, <laughs> Got Klatu Baradinikto, <laughs> which is the... Uh, uh, the day the earth stood still and then at the very end they've got a short circuit so i've always liked um, i've not included star wars on there but you know i'm representing today i always liked robots um i always thought star trek was a sort of didn't have enough robots in it but hey so yes i've always been into robotics in that sense but i've never built a robot until maybe about five years ago which was using uh, an arduino and a kit that i bought online and coding wise, I was always sort of in my brother's shadow when it came to coding. He had a ZX um, Spectrum, um, was it a six, no, 48K is the, the bigger version. And uh, we learned basic on that. But I was always sort of watching him code rather than doing it myself. So it was only when I went to uh, high school that I learned how to start writing in things like Pascal and C back in the day. Um, and then I've discovered that I have a real passion for robotics and coding and things like Python and 3D printing. So that's why I thought I would share that with the world. So if I click over here, you can see I've got my 3D printer just over here. I've got my weather bot just sat on it there. I've got various different bits. I've got my uh, InMove robot there as well. It's just here. Uh, and we've got some other bits and pieces. But this is my new robot lab. So this is where I do all my various different robot things in there. Uh, and teaching, I'm, I'm actually a project manager by by Korea um, until the YouTubing kicks off and <laughs> pays for itself, which it currently doesn't do. So yeah, that's a little bit about me. But I, I just love streaming. I love uh, communicating and sharing stuff about robots. I just love that kind of stuff. So Adam was saying, sorry, I missed most of the stream, so so can comment. That's fine. Don't worry about it. There's always replay as well. Adam's got a whole bunch of ESP32s, um, 32D4, STM, Arduino, and RPIs. Now I do have um, some other boards that I was going to mention about. 
So there is a ESP32 camera, which is basically just an ESP32 with a camera on board. What's quite cool about that is you can literally just power that up, connect to it over Wi-Fi, and then you can see streaming what's coming out of that camera. But it can't do anything other than that, as I understand. You can't like do AI and stuff on the board. I think it's not powerful enough. Then we have the uh, Pimeroni Tiny 2040, which is an absolutely minute board. If I can get that to focus. So that has the Raspberry Pi 2040 chip on there. Um, but it's an absolutely tiny, tiny little board. And that's, in fact, what powers the Smars Mini. So it's got one of them in its little backpack just there, just uh, like that. Um, then we have um, a seed chip. This is, let's see what that is, seed. Let me just zoom in on this for you. Uh, I bought this because I thought I've not got one of these. What does it do? So this is a, can we see what that says? Seed. I don't know, iconic, isn't it? Smart analog digital. No idea. I bought this one and I've not used it. I don't even know what it is. But it's um, from Seed Studios. They do some pretty cool things. And then, how could we not mention the uh, Wemos D1 Mini, which is essentially just that uh, that chip that we looked at earlier, that ESP01 chip, the ESP8266, but with some header pins on it and a USB connector. Um, so these things are pretty cool. Very similar to the SP8266, so that's why I didn't really cover that one off there. Okay, um, so there's a song by Adams called Don't Give Up. Absolutely. <laughs> uh, Chicane, Don't Give Up. Absolutely. So yeah, Jetson runs Ubuntu 18.4. Uh, I'm glad I'm not the only one that remembers it. Um, call it George, as in George Jetson. Now, I did wonder if this is where NVIDIA got their, their name choice from. Is it the Jetsons? Don't know. I'd, I'd seen this talked about a while ago. I know that um, James Bruton mentioned he, he had some a a AI stuff with um, the Jetson Nano. And I was like, what is this? And then I looked at it and I thought, that's quite expensive compared to a Raspberry Pi. I'll leave that for a while. But then I thought, I've got to get myself one so you can see my little green box there. So we're kind of doing an unboxing, but I've already done the boring bit of taking it out the box. <laughs> we are Borg. So I knew I wanted to build robots when I was in seventh grade. Me too, right? You just know that this is the way you're going to go. And it was I was unfortunately at the time when um, these BBC computers were very popular and they had a little robot called a turtle that you could move and turn and all that kind of stuff. And it had a pen and it would draw out stuff. And they had an entire language called Logo that was designed for moving this thing around. But by the time I got to that point where it was our turn to play with them, they were all broken and, um, yeah... We couldn't actually do that. Robert the Robot from the pre-80s Lost in Space. So that one was called, uh, um, is it B9? As in like the same robot in um, Star Trek, uh, Data's, I'm sure it's called B9. It's by the same designer anyway. He, he's the same person who designed both uh, Robbie the Robot and that one from uh, Lost in Space. So Adam's designing a new dev board for the uh, M5 stamp and M5 stack. So I have both of those boards, um, not to hand off I think on the other side of the room. But they're pretty cool. I like my M5 chips. Yeah, I've not got them to hand. The the M5, um, the stack is tiny, isn't it? It's like a USB stick size. Seedwino, that's it. XIO, that's what that is. That little chip there. That's what that is. <laughs> it's a pretty cool chip, actually. I need to get something running on that. Um, I remember seeing it and thinking, that's quite cheap for what it is. So I'll get myself one. But then it's gone on the shelf and I've not used it. Hey, Sebastian, how are you doing? And uh, I've got, um, how do you pronounce that? Is it Etan? I'm not very good with names, I'm afraid. Oh, he was called Robbie, was he? Oh, I, didn't, I thought Robbie was the, the one from Forbidden Planet. I thought the other one was called B9. Yeah, logo. <laughs> that was a thing. Right, let's get back over to the, uh, the Jetson and see, oops, how that's doing. Right, so it says, what... NPV model mode do you want to use? I have absolutely no idea. So I'm going to go for standard. I can always change that, reboot it and reflash the card. Um, what is it doing now? So it's just rejiggling everything. It's not asked me to type in any Wi-Fi pass. So, th excuse me, that's the thing. I understand that this board doesn't have Wi-Fi. That seems like a really odd thing to miss out. So I have actually got this connected via um, Ethernet. So you can see at the top there that it has an Ethernet connection. So it seems pretty weird that they haven't included Wi-Fi on there. I believe here is a module you can buy. 
Um, do you think you can use the same L298N motor driver board for Smiles Robot instead of the motor shield? Yes, you can. Um, so that is, if I can find the robot that's got that plugged in. Um, why can't I see it? It's the, the tiny little board, that one. There he is. I couldn't find him for looking then. So the L289N board is the same board that's in this thing. If I just go full screen there, this little red board there, I think that's the same one, isn't it? L298N. You can use that with the Smiles robot instead of the Mode Shield because that's what this one does here. So this is my Smiles Pico robot, which is kind of falling apart. He's got a battery, and a LiPo battery in there. It's got a custom made uh, insert and I've just been putting on some Bluetooth and also the wireless charger, which is what is underneath. So we did a show about that uh, a couple of weeks ago. So yes, you can, is the answer to that. <laughs> okay, um, what else we got there? So, all right, so it's just booting up now. See all the, uh, the nice stuff there, everything's going okay. Right, so it's saying to log in. So let's just type in, oops. Type my name in and then it just came up with loads of stuff. I've no idea what it's doing. There we go, right. So let's just type in that really secure password. Nvidia. Just in case you don't know who you're playing with. Right, so I want to play with some kind of AI thing. Uh, let's click on that. That says demos. I'm just, I have no idea. I've not looked at any tutorials or anything in advance of this. I thought we'd just try this live, right, and see how that goes. So, remap demo? I have no idea. I don't know if that's anything to do with AI or that's just graphics-y stuff. All right, there we go. Video source. Oh, right, so that's... Um, let's see what it's getting out there. Um, I'm clicking on stuff and nothing's happening there. What do I need to do? Video camera. All right, okay. Let's just change that. Open. Let's try camera instead. Um, I've not set up any camera device on this. I've just installed the normal camera. Maybe I need to do something on that. So that's probably not going to work, is it? I have got um, the camera from my InMove robot. So let's try plugging that in and see if that works. Plugging that in. I don't know if a USB camera will work. The way to find out is to try it. Good grief, this is more complicated than I thought it would be. There we go. Okay, so I plugged in um, a USB camera. I don't know if that works instead. Let's have a look. So please shout out if you know how to do this better than I do. Um, that would help. No, it's still not seeing the camera there. I probably need to set up the camera using some kind of menu thing. Um, so Hybotic says to get the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth on the Jetson, you need to install the M2 board uh, on the underside of the board. I can never get the antennas attached though. Yeah, so it seems like a bit of an oversight that. I mean, if this is designed for like mobile AI stuff, you would expect it to have that there, but maybe not. So I've no idea what NVIDIA Jetson Zoo is. Let's open that up and have a look. I'm not sure that is either. Um, I just want to try some demo programs out. Let's try that. And okay. So you can do some pretty awesome graphics, that's for sure. Far more than you would expect for a, a small board like a Raspberry Pi type board. So that, yeah, that's pretty cool. Um, so I guess what I will need to do is read some tutorials how to do some cool stuff with AI. Because what I want to do is do like real time object detection um, and show that to everyone as well. Let's just run this last one here, developer zone. I think that's just like a website link, isn't it? By the name of it, yeah. So that's not really going to help us out. So unless there's anything hidden away in some menus, then I, I'll probably have to take this one away and have a look at it. So what else have we got there? Graphics. No, that's nothing fancy. No idea what those things are. I don't know if they've got all open office on there. Um, cheese? What the what on earth is cheese? No idea what cheese is. There was something in there about... Um, where was it? Other. Ah, was that? 
Aha, 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 aha. This is my inmove that's just having a look there. So, um, I wonder if we can change the actual... <laughs> so I get it, cheese is... Um, let me just grab the head here. It's like photo booth, essentially. Right, so, <laughs> so this is my inmove head. So this is what you can see at the moment, which is what I can see. Uh, and which eye is it? It's that eye there. You can actually see the inside of his uh, his skull there because he's looking down and I've not set the eyes. <laughs> so say cheese, everyone, and I'll take your picture. So Adam says, say cheese. Let's just click on that. <laughs> can have that come on screen. Um, so yeah, I guess we can... It's not a great camera, that, to be honest. <laughs> That's supposed to be a Microsoft Live HD cam, but um, it's not very calibrated very well. So I can probably have a play with that down there and that's what I intend to do I tend to use this as a, a test bed for doing AI real-time video um, object detection classification that kind of stuff so Hypotic says Nvidia has some great tutorials for Jetson Nano um, one takes you all the way up from recognized objects like hand positions yes if you think about um, James Bruton he did that video where he had the triangles and the circles and the squares on cards and he could sort of get them to detect it and he had a little robot that would wheel its way towards these things to get to a certain distance on screen and then it would turn and find the next one. So that was pretty cool. And Richard says the lack of Wi-Fi is either to do making the board appear cheaper um, and you think the cost of Wi-Fi is pretty cheap <laughs> to add one of these things to it. Um, making more money on a separate board or perhaps to do with certification I think. It probably is, it's probably one of those things but it just seems to me like a, a bit of a misstep to in not include that given you can get one of these Raspberry Pis for £15 with everything included. This is going for like a hundred and something. So yeah, so this says say cheese, we've got video, we've got burst, and so on. So if we just take a picture of that. So you got a three, two, one, and then blink and flash the screen. Yep. <laughs> awesome. There we go. Okay, so I'll take that one away. I'll find some tutorials and I'll get that geared up for next time so we can have a play with that. But I thought I'd share that with you just in case there's something quite cool we could play with. Awesome, awesome. So how did you find today's show? Did you like the top trumps? <laughs> did I waste a lot of time producing them or did you find that fun? I think it was quite useful to go through all the various different boards, wasn't it, and see what you can do with them uh, and which one is probably best for your projects. And I think resoundingly, it's probably going to be the um, ESP32 possibly the Pico, possibly the Jetson Nano, or a Raspberry Pi Zero. So Noah says, I think they will include a USB module in some kits. Yeah, that'd be a good idea. I mean, you, you, one of the first robot things I built, what was it? It was, which we did a video on a couple of weeks ago, which is my thermal printer. Inside there, there is a, an official Raspberry Pi USB connector because the, the Raspberry Pi Zero that is in here didn't have Wi-Fi. So I just put a dongle on there and plugged it in and it's, it cost about £4 or something. It wasn't very expensive. So yeah, they, you can always put a USB um, dongle on there. They're, they're practically free nowadays. They're so cheap, them things. So yes, cool. So I'll uh, have a play with the um, Jetson Nano and I'll see what we can do with that. I'm, I was a bit worried that it's actually going to melt the... Uh, the plastic case that it's in because it does get quite hot that big heat sink so maybe i need to look at that but yeah i'm also going to work on the uh the smiles xl i'll probably do a video on that as well once the stls are all fitted correctly i did have a bit of problems squeezing some of these parts together because i've not got the tolerances quite right but um they all fit now cool okay so thanks everybody for watching this show i hope you had a I hope you enjoyed it i hope you uh voted along with me and you agree that 30, the ESP32, the Raspberry Pi Zero and the Jetson Nano, depending on your needs for your projects, are the right choices. Um, and I shall see you next time. Thanks, everyone.